Welcome to The Simsbury View. My name is Dominique Avery. Today, the view is about Simsbury's 350th anniversary and what sort of celebration the town should mount to observe it. It's not happening till 2020, but these things take time to plan. So today, we're going to begin the discussion. We'll take a look at the huge celebration Simsbury mounted 50 years ago to mark its 300th anniversary, what sort of plans are underway to mark the 350th birthday, and what you can do to get involved. There's no organization that's uh, in town that's more interested in this topic than the Simsbury Historical Society. So I've invited uh, several Simsbury Historical Society officials to join me for this discussion. Joe Buda, who's the current president and who also happens to be the chair of the Tourism Committee, is here. Barbara Strong is here. She's the Historical Society's archivist. And Ika Scullies, who's the SHS representative to the town committee. And she also recently was honored with a Hometown Hero Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to all three of you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. As I mentioned, these sorts of celebrations take a very long time to plan and involve a lot of people, and that's why I wanted to do this show, because we want to get as many people involved as possible. So I thought it would be a good idea if I started out by uh, asking you to remind people about Simsbury's history and why we want to celebrate its birthday. <laughs> why do we? What's, right. what's the big deal? And I, you know, I think it's important that we, there's milestones within a, uh, a town, and one of them is the naming of the town, and which happens to be, it would be in 2020, 350th, our anniversary of the naming of the town, and uh, how it was structured at that time, the governmental structures that occurred, and uh, going forward. And a great deal of planning occurs for celebrations based on that, what happened at that time. So I think it's, uh, it's important that at 300th anniversary in, in uh, the seven, uh, 1970 was a great time when they celebrated the, uh, the uh, 300th anniversary of the town itself. So what happened in, in 1670? 70. What happened? It's, it's really, you know, it's interesting because it's, it's at a time when it became, it was a col as a colony, and it was, before that it was a plantation more with the area itself. It's where it became the town of Simsbury. It was named at that time, town of Simsbury, and uh, governmental structures were put in place, recognized by the British crown at that time as a, uh, as a, a town. So before we were Simsbury, I know the Simsbury Historical Society at some point was called Massico. So was it called Massico before Simsbury? It was Massico Plantation was the, was was the, the name used it? before that oh, time. Oh, chime right? in, Barbara. Yeah, well, go ahead. Originally, Simsbury was part, it was a spinoff of Windsor. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't called much of anything for a while. And the Indian in the area were the Masako. Masako. Uh -huh. so oh, that's Masako, okay. Sort right. of where the word came from. Right. Uh, so what actually happened in 1670? They petitioned the um, government, the royal government in Hartford, and were given the name. So this, when the legal right. name first was established of Simsbury. Okay. So I'm going to go uh, back a step and, mm -hmm. and ask about the name. I've been told uh, many times that Simsbury is the only Simsbury in the entire world. That's what we've been told. Right. Okay, so yeah. where did the name come from, and why are we the only ones? Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, th that's we don't really know. I mean, I, there's there's stories about it's a combination. Um, what what at that time, when towns were named, they were requested to be, to my understanding, a either an English town itself, you know, after you know, right. or, or something European, something English sounding or something that sounded English. And Simsbury fit that category more. There wasn't a Simsbury, England, uh, a town or anything like that. It was, they came up with that name at that time. That's my understanding. Yeah. Interesting, because some people say it's Simonsbury, but spelled differently. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. So, um, so you mentioned something about Indians. Mm -hmm. There were Indians here. How did you pronounce it? Masako? Masako. 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 Yeah. Um, and I have um, read that the, the families that were here initially, I think I read somewhere that there were 40 of them, uh, that there was some 
kind of issue. They were afraid of the Indians and they left, and then they burned the town down. Is that um, a myth? Is Did that happen? Um, um, there was the Pequot War, and as part of that, um, mercenary Indians, not the local Masako, there were very few really, and they were peaceful people, um, were charged with going throughout the area and causing problems. And they, the townspeople had enough warning that they removed, as they called it, to the fort, the Palisado in Windsor, pretty much everybody. And yes, some of the, many of the buildings were burned. It wasn't very populous. You know, there were a certain number of farms, remote farms in the area. And, but it was all part of that war, um, that period of, of unrest in Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. So then, then they people came back, and then over a period of time, about right. two or three years later, the the government in Hartford uh, made a law that said if the residents in Simsbury did not go back and live on their farms and farm them, uh, they would have to pay higher taxes, because some people were afraid to go back or, or mm -hmm. decided they didn't want to do that anymore. You know, it's interesting. We we said before we started taping that uh, none of the people who are sitting here are actually from Simsbury. I, I know New not. York history, I grew up in New York, that's what I learned. So, and, right. and all of you, what, just, uh, just mm -hmm. take another step backwards, what got you guys so interested in the town's history? Jump in. Well, I, I think for myself, it was, I've always enjoyed history and political science, and I think it was a natural, uh, been here for over 25 years, but uh, to get involved with the history, of the town, which was very intriguing overall, and uh, to get involved with the historical society here. Barbara? I started as a docent giving tours, and then I got more and more involved. And I like, um, I like facts. I like to know why and how things happened, and history does provide some of that information. Ika, I heard uh, <coughs> you got the Hometown Hero Award that you're from Virginia. I am. So what got you involved? <laughs> Were you interested in Virginia's history? Well, yes. yes. I, I have found that through um, my school years, I was always able to retain the history facts. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but what got me interested in Simsbury's history is the Simsbury Historical Society sponsored a couple of barn tours um, a few a couple years ago. Um, and our barn was asked to be on it. So I decided, well, better clean up the barn, better straighten it up, better learn something about it. Then I started learning about the construction about it and the different evolutions of barns. And then you see the scribe marks left by the carpenters at that time. And you start imagining what their conversations were, what, what challenges they were up against. Um, why did they build this barn this way? So it's just interesting following the footsteps of people in history and seeing tangible evidence of their existence it was just intriguing. So it just started there and kept going. So what you have just described is sort of what we want to do for the residents of Simsbury, many of whom are also newcomers, right? We want to get them interested in the history of the town. Um, and to celebrate it, right, Barbara? Right. Absolutely. So, um, Barbara, I know you're the archivist and you have a, uh, a big file in front of you. Book. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I found it fascinating to go back and read a little bit about what happened 50 years ago. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the celebration involved. It was huge. It was huge. huge. And what I have here is uh, the, the scrapbook made by John Ellsworth, who was the head of Ensign Bickford at the time, had been involved, well, his family had been involved for decades at the local historical society. And he was the chairman of the Tercentennial Committee. He had a board of eight officers and 13 directors, each of whom had a task, an event, a, a oh. process task. Oh yes, <laughs> and what's so lovely about this? Maybe if I should I put it down here? Is that sure. and we good? can try and take some shots of it later? Okay. Um, there's everything from photographs of drum and fife and drum corps at the dedication of the meeting house. Um, let, let's just say the first week of the six month event, which was uh, started in mid May 1970 and ran till the end of October. In the first week alone, there were. Um, let's see, on May 10th, 
they dedicated the new meeting house, which looks like the oldest building on the Historical Society property. So not only did they dedicate it, but wasn't it built for it? It was built, built for built. this okay. time. So they built a building for this. <laughs> well, right. yes. And the headquarters. <laughs> the headquarters, right. yes. And um, Richard Shope, an architect, was on the Tercentennial Committee, designed the structure. We have a, his model for the building in our archives. Um, May 12th was the Tercentenary, the opening ceremonies, and they had everyone, the governor, people from the state. They had a, they dedicated a queen for the event and a court, and the queen and court were active all throughout the six months. On May uh, 14th, think, there was a- Do you know how they chose the queen? No, not, I've seen, I saw pictures, <laughs> high school girls. Oh, they were high school. Yeah, okay. they were very okay. cute pictures, I don't know. Okay. Um, May 13 or 14, there was a play at Ethel Walker. May 15th was the beer judging contest, which I'll get into in a minute. <laughs> May 16th and 17th, the first weekend, the Indian village was open down near Folly Farm. This is one week. And for the, for the six months, if you've read the calendar, there were a great many events. The beer growing contest, I thought was absolutely fascinating. This began, again, Ensign Bickford, and they started out, um, and you could register, you had an official entry form, where you're, was your beard going to be the Ellsworth style, the Ensign style, the Bickford style, or the toy style, and they had portraits or copies of paintings of these 18th and 19th century people, and this is John Ellsworth's registration form to grow a beard, and then People were so interested that they expanded it to the townspeople, and the police department got involved, and then all sorts of other people. There were several hundred people who grew beards. So uh, did, did, <coughs> didn't somebody say that, um, or somebody told me that if you didn't grow a beard, you had to pay money or buy a badge? Well, did I don't know, but what a great idea. It's yeah, a fundraiser. I, I, I think they had, it wasn't a fine so much, but you I don't, needed I don't to have make any a donation. Idea. And, and you had to wear, I, I've been asking people what their memories are, <laughs> oh, well, this and is you fun. had to wear a badge that showed that you had paid money mm -hmm. so as not I didn't to grow, grow a beard, beard, but I donated. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, right. I donated I, at the office. I don't know, <laughs> but I, that was a wonderful, <laughs> um, a wonderful start at Ensign Pickford and then went through to townspeople. May 23rd, the Hartford Symphony, Symphony performed a very classical program at the new high school. So there were all sorts of, of mm. involvement of other groups or people with various interests. June 20th was a parade, very big. Okay, June talk, can you talk about the parade? I want to interrupt you. That I've read about the parade too. It was huge. It was huge. It was huge. Uh, 20, I think I, I made a note somewhere, 25 groups and 20 musical groups. And, and bands floats and, and floats right. and I mean, organizations. Like the Rose Bowl, I mean, that kind of thing. <laughs> School I mean, children marching in costume, the Garden Club <coughs> ladies marching out. It was, it was huge. Um, and another thing that, that older women have told me about is that women marched as suffragettes wearing all white. Mm -hmm. That's something that is stuck in their I minds. Would, yeah. That's pretty I'm cool. I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to No, I think that's them. wonderful. That just, I don't know a lot about it, but the end of that week, the 27th of June, was the Tercentenary Ball which was held at the pavilion at the Rosewood Restaurant. You have it. Oh, you boy. Have Save it for the next ball. That was <laughs> cheered by Mrs. Ellsworth, and there were over a 1,000 guests. I mean, these were not minor events. And what was the population in 1970? 18,000. Yeah. 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 Um, September 26th, they, we dedicated the schoolhouse at the Society, which was then by then installed. So there was a lot going on at our organization. Um, the year before, Alan Hickson won the design for the contest for the new town seal. So that was in use then. And he's a name many people knew as a local architect. And they still know because of his building. Because right. of his railroad building. The railroad there station. There the Absolutely. Right. And on October 25th, they had closing ceremonies, and that's when they buried a time capsule. Again, under the steps to the new meeting house, at the Historical Society. The capsule's supposed to be opened in 2070 at the 400th anniversary of the town. Wow. Isn't that great? That's great. Right. So a time capsule could a be a fun to go yet. 2070? <laughs> yeah. None of us will be here. Yeah, and they said, so I, I tried to find out what they what did they put in it. Um, so they put in a map of the town, two tickets to the Tercentenary <laughs> Ball, the Chamber of Commerce annual report, the Oracle Farms development plans, because that was a big issue very exciting at that time. The same year they developed, mm -hmm. since yes. very farms yes. began, the development Oracle began farms. that year. Yeah. So these were very, so they wanted to put in timely things. They put a two-page newspaper ad for groceries, so people in 50, 100 years later could see what we ate, apparently. Um, souvenir coins, a little town flag, the brochure from the tercentenary. centenary. Um, I don't know what else, it would be sort of a mystery. <laughs> 
Well, but we, we, this was we'll six months of act, six right. months of activity. That's for sure. Uh, as I read about it, I mean, it's just it's just incredible what they did. As I read about it, I thought, oh my goodness, are we ever we're we're, we're we never going to be able it? to do that? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that's version. just unbelievable. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to we'll have to do um, something a little bit smaller. The one thing you mentioned was the Indian Village. I was impressed by that too. It was the Simsbury Civitan Club and the Boy Scouts who created this mm -hmm. whole village. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, incredible. So okay, here we are, historical society now. You're the guys who are interested. You're interested in history, so I, you're, I'm sure you're very concerned about what it is that we're going to try and do for the 350th. Ika, you have already started doing something. What did, what did you do in June? Well, we figured we would try to start focusing on the different historic neighborhoods in town. Um, um, it's, so it's a little more than just a historic house tour. We're, we're focusing on clusters of homes that are in, in a neighborhood um, to help us focus in on the history of, of the town of Simsbury and to help people like myself, newcomers, um, come to appreciate the history, the very rich history of Simsbury. Um, and so we've, we've started in Weetog, which is traditionally known as the oldest part of town, but there are older homes all around. Um, the oldest home in Simsbury is on East Weetog Street, number 11, 1717. Um, thanks to the Pequot War, we don't have many, <laughs> um, we don't have many older structures than that. Um, we will, we've just did a, another historic house tour on the Hoskins Station neighborhood, which was also a holiday house tour. Um, next year we will do one on October 14th in Terraville. We will also focus in on the Center District, uh, West Simsbury, which was Case Farms. Um, um, the Bushy Hill District has, a, has um, a focus of interest as well. So th we try to do one, maybe two a year up to 2020. We have more neighborhoods than we have years left <laughs> to 2020, so it may, it may go on beyond that too. But um, we find it a fun way to focus on the different aspects of Simsbury's history. So, right. and I think there's other areas we're looking at too. We're doing research right now on the, on the Native Americans that lived here prior to that time and at time of contact. So there's currently, we're doing some research that looks at the stone structures that are, that are located throughout the town that may be still there, but not really recognized. So uh, right now, a feasibility study is looking at what it would take to research out the entire town, what we call Old Simsbury, not just what's in the, the town now, but what it looked like. We were expanded back in those days. Uh, and we were parts, you know, Granby was part of us and other towns. Canton too. Canton okay. also, in that to look at the, the land and mostly the highlands and see if there is stone structure still there from the Native Americans. Uh, some could be everything from, uh, uh, used for studying the stars, as it were, in that, or were they trail markers? Uh, were they used for calendars in some way or not? But a number of different stone structures. So that's occurring right now. Uh, the feasibility of having such a study where we'd survey all the property in this area by 2020. Did I read a couple of years ago that there was a dis that there was a stone on Simsbury Farms or something, a, yeah, a big rock? Right. Did, did that end up that, being anything? That, that's a stone that I actually discovered, as it were, but, okay, so it was but you. Uh, identified it was big. and uh, called the Eagle Man that has a uh, an image that could be seen on it that is. Uh, it, it looks like it was hand tooled, which means the human somehow scraped it and, and enhanced the stone to create a figure. And so uh, some initial work was done on that, but I think part of this study, these type of, if we go further with the study, uh, this, uh, this actual stone would be further researched as part of the findings. I, I think actually probably um, anything that having to do with Indians is now sort of of more interest. People now understand that that there were people here before they came from right. Windsor. And, uh, <laughs> Absolutely, right. and it's so, ten thousand years. So it, right. this was populated for a very long period of right. time. 
So um, just a little bit more about the Simsra Historical Society, if the three of you could share a little more information for people in town. We have so many people who move in and out who don't know much about it. It's a unique um, uh, organization, uh, and a un- it's, you know, most towns have a building that's the Historical right. Society. Somebody jump in. <laughs> tell, tell me about it. Tell, tell our audience about it who may not know much about it. Barbara, do you want to start? The memory keeper. Okay. Um, the Historical Society was founded in 1911. It, it, it's today a nonprofit by a group. In 1911, a group of people who were interested and connected very closely to the history of the town. Now we, of course, welcome everybody who's interested or wants to learn. Um, we have a two-acre site with two original buildings, the um, meeting house, which is looks oldest and is newest and the schoolhouse that was moved there in 1970. We have a, a replica of the first Ensign Bickford, Toy Bickford fuse line that the company gave us and built a structured house. We have a visitor center, we have archives. We do everything from events to um, research to, um, we have a gift shop, we do programs. So it's almost a mini Sturbridge type. Well, yeah, no, it's fascinating. <laughs> very many. And, and, and very many. We haven't even talked about how we want to get people involved. Get people, uh, how to get people involved. involved. No, almost, it was, <coughs> we started bringing buildings over over a period of time from other parts of town. The probate building was really the last building that was brought over hmm? to our property. And it really gives a little microcosm of of uh, Simsbury over the years. And I think that's what we're looking at also is not just looking at the 1700s or the 1800s, but the development of the town over these 350 years that in, where were the building booms of the 70s or 60s. And also looking at those houses that were built, not just the colonial homes, but looking at neighborhoods and how neighborhoods developed and transitioned from farmland to the homes that were built there at that time. So that would really get more people engaged with their neighborhood in the feelings of what were being built, you know, what were built over time. So I think that's important. And the historical society really looking at really the past, present, and future in many ways of of history, history being made today and capturing that when people bring in items or whatever the case may be or in, in projecting in the future uh, what will be the needs of a community from an historical point of view of uh, how our archives are set up, how our building structures, do we have what's needed to really service the, the community itself by the way we're structured. So um, do you, have you identified sort of major problems? I mean, do, do you think that there are people in town who don't quite know what you are? And um, is there more that you would like to see happen? Um, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's always a challenge uh, to be in a place where you're so caught up in your regular routine that um, your daily routine that you, you, you sort of need to take a vacation to come visit us because <laughs> um, most people can't break out of their regular routine long right, enough just to, drive to, come, to come and, right. and um, because so many times we hear people go, oh, is that what that is? Right. <laughs> I didn't know you yeah. were there. I, I didn't right. know you were right. there. Right. So we try to have more activity on the, on the property um, to draw attention to it. Um, it all takes time and energy and volunteers. And it's all volunteers. It's all, it's volunteers, all, right? it's all volunteers. There's no funding from the, the town or state or anything like that. Uh, we raise all our, basically our own funds and uh, for operational purposes and to go forward. So uh, it's important. Volunteerism is critical for us. And anyone that wants to be a volunteer, please stop in. Uh, there's many different things that we're involved with and activities and events. So we could, uh, any one that's available. So you already need volunteers just for the normal stuff that the <laughs> right. Historical Society does. And now we're going to start reaching out right. to more people, to get more people involved. So, Barb, looking back at the things that you have seen, what are you hoping that we're going to be able to do for the 350th? Well, I think the scale is going to be different because at, at that time, most housewives were home and they were making costumes for their children and they were cooking and whatever. Um, I think a few events that people are excited about, and I think one could be, silly as it is, the beard growing. I think that could be fun. 
and it's not it's something young younger or older men might find fun. It's true, and beard growing right now seems to be and extraordinarily it seems to be, really, really <laughs> you know, popular. And good styles and right. whatever. Um, I don't know if we could float a parade. You know, our Memorial Day parade perhaps would be the parade that year. It could serve more than one purpose. Perhaps a celebration ball is something that a, could happen. A, a big, uh, you know, a big event of some you know. sort. Absolutely, but yeah. we would need support. We need someone who says, you know, I want to be on in the group that works on that, and I can bring four other people and. We'll provide backup. Right, as much and I as we also can. read that the schools got heavily involved. You mentioned Ethel Walker did something. The private schools were the, all involved. And the um, Simsbury, the Simsbury his, uh, history teacher wrote a pageant that mm -hmm. the Simsbury yep. High School students yep. performed. Yep. And Simsbury students served as guides on they bus tours of historical they, houses. They were very involved. It would be fun to find the, the scripts for those plays that were written and perhaps do those again. Um, mm, we, we might have them. You might have them. I may have, have them. Yeah. I don't know that I have them. That's, yeah. I have many, many copies of those newspapers. <laughs> I'm not sure about everything else, but we, I might. We can envision perhaps each organization in town um, finding some aspect of it that they could um, help with or take yeah. ownership of. Yeah, I think that's a very important uh, point that uh, Eek is making now that it's really getting organizations involved, even if it's a small event or activity, but if they take on one, we really could have a very robust year of activities. And, and it's what we're calling Vision 2020. What would, be, what would 2020 look like for the, the town itself, from a tourism point of view even, right. uh, going forward? Yeah, so um, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm also on the tourism committee <laughs> with Joe, and I'm very interested in, right. um, in getting people here. You know, before I thought we'd run out of time, but now we actually have. <laughs> um, uh, I hope some of you have uh, been inspired to uh, get involved. If you'd like to know more or have ideas about celebrating the 350th anniversary, the Board of Selectmen has actually put together a committee to work on the project, and they are thinking about holding a volunteer fair uh, for those who are interested. And Cheryl Cook tells me that they've already had several people step forward to offer um, their time and talents. If you have been inspired and have any ideas now and you want to um, volunteer, you can contact Cheryl at ccook at simsbury-ct.gov. Please think about it and get your organizations involved. I want to thank everyone here at SCTV behind the scenes for getting the show on the air. Uh, Sam Davidson, our volunteer uh, camera person, and Karen Hanville, our station manager and director, and Kristen Benedict, who's going to edit all of this. And thanks especially to my three guests. Thank you so much for doing the research, for coming and bringing all these interesting things. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, finally, thank you for joining us. And if you uh, missed any portion of the show, you can always find it on our website at simsburytv.org. I'm Dominique Avery. See you next time on The Simsbury View. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.